All right. <clears throat> so this is the Enjora axles. I wish I could have afforded the bit of on, but it's out of my price range for right now. Maybe down the road I'll get them uh, for the, you know, for the Axial SCX6. Um, first thing I want to talk about is this uh, servo mount from G-Speed. Um, when I first got the X Axial SC, when I ordered it, um, about a week later I saw the servo mount, or the SOA mount, and I ordered that. But I'd already ordered a bunch of upgrade parts. These are the Trill Shock Towers. And one thing I noticed after getting the servo mounted to the axle is the uh, panhard mount hits right here. So if I cut this off, I'll gain about five to six more millimeters of uh, shock compression in that area. I don't know if I'm going to cut it off or not. Probably shouldn't. That's not that big of a deal. What I had to do to get this to fit, even though you can set it on there and it just slaps right into place, it's when you start to, start to run bolts through shit that uh, you find out that things are a little bit off. So for this this uh, little bolt right here, it's a M4 that goes through to here. I, no matter how hard I try, I could not hit the thread at all. It's passed through. It's all passed through right to here, and then the threads start. So this is the area inside where it's threaded. The rest of it's just passed through. But uh, I could not hit those those threads. I couldn't get this bolt to thread. So what I ended up doing is running, uh, sending a, built, a drill bit all the way through the pass through and uh, drilling out maybe, you know, God, it, it'd be tough to say if it was even a sixteenth of an inch, just to get the bolt guided into that hole. And then once it was guided in, it would thread the rest of the way in. But before that, I was sanding, uh, I was sanding relief on the mount itself in this area and this area. I also had to sand the sides of these down just a little bit. These uh, ears. Um, but yeah, I had to, on the, on, the, on the servo mount itself, I had to sand and try to get as much relief as I could all along these edges through here. So I don't know how much I took off sanding, probably not that much, but the the main thing was um, this is what what caused it all to get this bolt started. Then I finally just decided to drill out a little bit of material on this to, to widen the hole a little bit, which helped the, guide the bolt into that hole, and then then it got threaded. Then it started threading. Um, up here on the uh, fourth link, before I ordered these uh, <clears throat> rod ends, I was just using a, a regular straight rod end, and it looked like it was hitting the side here, so I just relieved that a little bit right in there. Um, this curved one doesn't hit at all. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't come over this far. It's at this angle over here. But with the straight straight one, I had to push it over. It looked like it was hitting, so I, I just relieved this a little bit. My worry is, you know, got to make sure we get plenty of thread lock. So I'm going to have to take this all apart and get plenty of thread lock on these bolts. I have some on it now, but I don't know if I put enough. Because um, normally I just tip, do the very tip of the screw. But I have a feeling I might might need to go a little bit heavier on the thread lock. This in here. To make the fourth link, I used three stock brass that I already had from another project. <clears throat> I ordered a package of these uh, off of eBay. You can order them in different quantities, but these are M6 by 30 millimeter socket set screws. 
So socket meaning, you know, that's the socket. I used a uh, 7 32nd drill bit to drill the end out. And then I tapped it with a M6 millimeter tap. Uh, I ordered a pack of <clears throat> the rod, rod ends for the Axial SCX6, and I used the rear upper link ends, which have a slight bend to them. And there's, I believe there's only two in the pack. Still have to make the steering link, which I will make out probably out of this same stuff right here. Um, so that's all that's all that's left on this to get the the steering going is to make the steering link but i got to get the electronics hooked back up you could probably use if you could find an aluminum uh three stock like this aluminum be a little bit lighter than this brass or if you find a three eighths uh tube and uh Hopefully, it's the inner diameter of the tube is not bored out more than a M6. But you'd probably better off just going with, you know, the stock, the rod stock, and uh, drilling and tapping it yourself. I, I use a mini lathe, so I'm kind of got it good there. But if you're careful, you could, uh, you could mount this vertical in a vise and... Uh, as long as you're real careful with being straight up and down on the drill, uh, you should be able to drill about that depth right there, about about half the length of one of these uh, set screws, because these are pretty deep here. Let's show you how how deep these are there. So yeah, that's about. Close to half the length. Of one of these. Making a, for the Axial SCX6, I'm making a uh, <clears throat> a brace. I can no longer use the uh, brace that goes underneath the motor because <clears throat> of the servo on axle and I mounted my fourth link more likely in a different spot than where you're supposed to but um it was convenient for for the parts I had to use um I don't know yet if they're making the links for it I assume they are I just didn't feel like spending the money I had the materials here to make one so different brace I'm kind of moving it uphill a little bit in between the shock towers so I don't think I don't think it's going to matter that much. So it's not like I'm going to jump this thing or anything. Um, so have a little fun on the uh, on the mini lathe. <clears throat> so I was going to use this uh, some three eighths uh, brass stock that I have, but I found this piece of three eighths aluminum, and that'll be much lighter and reduce the center of gravity H cog. On it, so going to drill and tap this for. Uh, I believe it's an M4 screw. I have to check. I'm pretty sure it's an M4. So we're drilling and tapping this for M4. So let's fire it up. I left this piece a little long. I'd rather be long and, and have to remove a little bit. So I'll drill and tap it and we'll go, I'll go test fit it. If it's a little long, it's easier, easier to remove the material.
Because I uh, chose to use this position to mount this uh, fourth link, um, it deletes the chassis brace going underneath the motor mount right in here. This one. Stock is plastic, but it deletes this brace. So I made my own little uh, brace out of a piece of 3 8 aluminum. Um, stock and I could have mounted it anywhere from here up to here I just chose right here uh, but it does delete this brace that goes underneath the motor right there makes a hardcore RC is uh, the one that I believe makes links for this SOA mount from uh, Team G Speed. I don't know if they're making them yet, but uh, I think they uh, probably mount somewhere back here a little bit further, or at least are able to keep the, the motor mount. I'm not sure. It's for their, it's for G Speed's uh, LCG chassis. So, you know, I just have no idea if you're able to keep the stock motor mount with a different setup. I just didn't want everything super tight right in here. And now it's not. I'm not going to be bashing this thing, so I'm not too worried about having a brace right underneath the motor. So, that's why I've mounted this up here and put the link over here. So here's what it looks like in the chassis. Those are the rod <clears throat> rod ends I used from the rear. Here's the rear. These ones right here. And then uh, I just ran the bolt through an existing hole. On the uh, I guess part of the rock slider mount thing right here and I used a uh, I used a bearing for a spacer right there I can point to it so I used a bearing for a spacer kick it out away from the frame a little bit 
flipped up here. There it is mounted in there. So yeah, I used two of these links and one on each end here, um, which angles it this way and angles it that way. Um, little little play back and forth. That's <clears throat> that's because of the uh, the balls and the uh, rod ends. Other than that, she's looking pretty good. It's got my little brace that I made in there. Uh, it pulls just a slight bit to the to the driver's side when I compress. Not a lot. I got articulation on this heavy pig. Yeah, that's <clears throat> Summit 1G on Twitch TV in the background. Um, like I mentioned before, the old Panhard bar mount uh, does it right down here before full suspension uh, compression. So there's probably about, oh guys. Five to ten millimeters of shock shaft left exposed before it bottoms out. <clears throat> but I don't think I'm going to worry about it. So front end's done. Everything's Loctited. Um, overdrive gear installed. Jora axles looking good. I think that was a good buy over the Vitavons. The only way I'd go with the Vitavons over these is if I want to do the portholes, which may be in the future. So I am a portal fan. But And the only other thing that I'd like to do is be able to remove this, but I don't want to do it and risk a chance of fucking these up. So hopefully it doesn't snag too many rocks. <clears throat> 